All right, what is good, you guys? Back at it again with the GFCC Radio. You know we got one of our favorite homeboys here, Genie Dot. Today we're going to get really deep into some universal stuff. And I bet you this is going to be two parts because... We got a whole bunch of joint that we like to talk about and that's very potent. So first, I want to say thank you for coming on the show once again. We love you so much, bro. For sure, bro. I love being here. I missed y'all, man. I was like, bro, was it going to have me back? I, I, I was missing it. So yeah. And also, real quick, Dawn, if you're watching this, hey, auntie, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, auntie. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so I want to say... Today, we're going to be going a little deep into some universal stuff. And it's wild how me and Jeannie have like, it's like the same journey, but in different ways. It's so much like yin and yang, but we're always, especially when we post, it's around the same stuff. And whenever we're getting information, it's about the same things, but it's like different angles. And for this one, we are going to start with the Omniverse. Now, I called it the Universal Cube. Now, uh, let me tell you how it first started. So when I was getting this information from the Galactic Federation, at one point, I actually wanted to astral project and see how far I could go. I wanted to go as far as I could. So the GFL told me first that when you go out there, that the universe, it goes universes, it goes like galaxy, and then universe, and then universe is like a metaverse like the superverse and it keeps going until it gets to something as large as the universal cube which is made out of universes like cells in our body which is interesting because our cells are basically like universes of their own as well so i found that really fascinating how large it goes and then when i talked to genie about this i was like do you know anything about the universal cube because i was also told that it is a technology so I was like, yo, like, I don't know what it is. Is it technology? Is it real? And I realized it's both. And so I was being taught about how the universal cube technology is based off of the larger verse, metaverse, or what we call omniverse now. And I realized how it allows the people in the galaxy co to connect with the universal cube. And so th the tie with it is so deep that when I talk to Genie about it, he knew what was up and he called it the Omniverse. And he's like, yo, I've been I've been known about this and I've been getting joined about this for a bit now, too. So I would love for you to go a little bit about how you kind of discovered the Omniverse or the Universal Cube and kind of your experience with it. All right. So with the Cube, right, it was crazy how that all popped up, because when you first mentioned that to me, like I was being told that day that I was going to go to like the Avian Galaxy. Right. And I've noticed that when it comes to galaxies, galaxies are like whole different realms. Like before I will call the planes of reality realms, but a plane is a level of reality. So there's 12 planes, 12 levels of reality. A realm is a field of activity. So you have different fields of activity inside every Every single plane a galaxy is literally a field right it's a field of light where activity happens at so it's like a whole different like there's literally whole different worlds dimensional spaces it's it's crazy inside galaxies so i was gonna go to the avian one now i didn't even realize how this whole cube stuff is looking up at first because like he just talking about the cube i'm like yo this cube seems important but like what's up with it and then at nighttime he mentioned it again i'm like bro what's up with this damn cube then i got a huge download about it so i was being told like by the phoenixes and avians how like it, it helped to like structure like the whole entire omniverse into one because the word omni means all and then verse means if you look at a verse it'll say writing arranged in a metrical rhythm typically having a rhyme so a verse is a, is a rhythm then rhythm means a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. So a rhythm is a repeated pattern of vibration. So an omniverse is pretty much the sum total of all the different repeated patterns of vibration because reality is just a repeated pattern of vibration. Right now, they always say that everything comes from the zero point field. The zero point field is literally a field of fluctuating light field uh, patterns of vibration. So with that being said, I was being taught at first it was just like, oh, the cube helps to structure the whole entire universe. I didn't even know about the omniverse yet. And then it's like, I forgot what made it happen. But I was like, 
I knew I knew there's like a mo oh I knew what made it happen. So I was thinking about like paradoxes and how a paradox is is pretty much like when something happens that doesn't really make sense. So a, an example is like let's say I were to time travel right now to my grandpa to make my grandpa stop meeting my dad. That's a paradox because if I stop my grandpa from I said meeting my dad, if I stop my grandpa from making my dad, then he can't make me. If my dad never made me, I can't go back to the past and stop my dad from being born. So it doesn't make sense and stuff like that actually mm -hmm. tends to break reality. The only way it does make sense with a multiverse when you have multiple realities. So the so the version of me who went back to stop my dad from being made is not the same timeline you know what i'm saying is different timeline versus you that's where the multiverse comes into play so i was like trying to find out more about how that works i started being taught about the the greater omniverse and like i remember like someone inside the discord sent a picture of like different layers of universes right so i'm like bro i gotta find that right and then i, I looked it up and i was seeing that people already tend to like have like five main ones universe multiverse then it'll be like metaverse and then they had like hyperverse and xenoverse. I like saying universe, multiverse, metaverse, megaverse, superverse. And there's and there's five main ones. Now they have stuff like uh killerverse and petaverse, but those are different things to what we're talking about inside here. Mm -hmm. And then also I already was taught about harmonic universes or harmonious ways of experiencing the universe, which now I'm conscious the whole omniverse because the whole omniverse includes every single arc verse so there's five arc verses arc verse means great verse we, we're calling it a great verse a great pattern of vibration because in every single verse there's other smaller patterns of vibration so inside the superverse right this is the first one to come into play like with the do I have, do I have my paper right here i do so you see how you have like all these different joints that go into this one thing right here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this one thing at the bottom is the whole universe, right? So you have all these different, these are different realms inside different verses. So these are different, uh, I mean, yeah, these are different realms inside the uh, superverse, megaverse, metaverse, and they all link inside the universe. Now the piece of paper is the omniverse. So the mm -hmm. omniverse is where everything manifested inside of, but the universe actually links every single one. So inside the um the superverse, right? The way that the way that vibration repeats itself there is as electric charges. Then inside the megaverse, they become electric fields. Then inside the metaverse, they're electromagnetic fields. Let me backtrack a little bit. So once again, a realm is a field of the activity right or or domain of activity right now why am i saying this when you have an electric field right that is an electric realm literally it's mm -hmm. a field of activity so all the realms inside the megaverse are like electric realms all the realms inside the metaverse are electromagnetic realms now from those electromagnetic realms you had artificial ones get made so if you guys know about Gnosticism, right, there's actually a story with um, Sophia, which represents wisdom, right? But it's wisdom that's not unified with Christ. And oh, I forgot what Christ would have directly represented, but it's like, well, you don't create with knowledge from the creator or some shit like that. Essentially, when that happened, she made a being named uh, Yadabov. Now, that being's actually a reptile. Now, why is that so important? Inside the metaverse, right? It was reptilians who started making the artificial realms and stuff like that, which shouldn't even really be seen as bad because the reason why you can see a galaxy right now is because they actually made the stuff. Because understand that before the multiverse and universe, things were not physical at all. So it would have been like you had this, let me get a blank piece of paper. It's like you had this blank piece of paper, right? And there was beings everywhere, but you couldn't see them. Once they started making stuff, it started to actually form now. So... Well, all that being said, this this start dealing with these fucking with these with these frog wars, with these frogs fighting reptilians inside the freaking metaverse, and then inside the universe, it manifested as this cold spy in Eridanus, where literally nothing can manifest that because inside that space, there's like paradoxes there. So they essentially broke reality there, therefore nothing manifests there. And if you look up Eridanus cold spot, you'll literally you'll literally see. How scientists propose that, yo, is this the result of a multiverse collision? 
what the freak made scientists say that? But the thing is, yeah, it actually is. The way you cause a one of the ways you cause a paradox is by colliding multiple realities. Because, like I said before, the multiverse kind of helps to solve a paradox, but you could only take so many. You know what I'm saying? Different timelines coming into one for stuff stop making sense. I actually, I actually went to a place called Paradox Palace, and they put me through a paradox. And essentially, what happened inside there was like it's like. I was in a dream experience, but I woke up at some point actually here. Then when I went back to the same exact dream, I, I was in a different kind of dream that was similar to the first dream. So I was remembering stuff from the first dream, from my real life, and from that reality. And when all the memories mixed into one, it's like stuff will stop making sense. Because like, I'll talk to my mom right inside this reality about, about, about something that happened over here. But she didn't see what happened over here. Only I did. So mm -hmm. it's like reality would start to break as I did stuff like that. And like I was trying to show my mom something right inside this reality that came from a different one. And when I got to my mom, it crumbled because she never saw it before. So it was like, nah, -uh, not, not wrong reality. I'm like, what? So like the whole stuff just started literally like falling apart. The more where I would try to contemplate what's really going on here. So, yeah, like imagine like 50 of those is coming together. It does break <laughs> reality. That's why nothing grows inside that spot in Iridanus. And with Iridanus, Iridanus literally like the flow of time isn't Iridanus. So there's a mm -hmm. concept called hor 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 horologium or something like that. Horologium mm -hmm. is right next to Iridanus. They manage the flow of time. So Iridanus is the flow of time. Hor horog horologium manages it. And I say all the I say the flow of time goes in there because here's how you could kind of see it, right? Imagine like a tourist shit that kind of goes like this, right? So Iridanus would be like right here, right in the middle where all time comes into one at, you know? So when you go to Iridanus, it's like there's so like you could like you could literally visit the beginning of the uh you the beginning of the obverse, end of the obverse, you know what I'm saying, and the beginning and end of every individual verse and stuff like that. So yeah, but back to the original question with how I got into this Omniverse stuff, that's kind of how it happened. So with the universe, I just want to say this UD means what the verse means uh repeated pattern of vibration. So the universe is where all the patterns of vibration come into what? That's why mm -hmm. it's the UD verse. So yeah, if the multiverse is just different timelines for the universe, and that's because to make the universe, right, they had to have a plan, like, oh, should we do it like this? Should we do it like that? Them saying, should we do it like this or like that is what makes the multiverse. Now, what they say, well, if the multiverse is only multiple uh, tablas for the universe, well, what about the multiple tablas for the um, beings inside, like, the metaverse and the megaverse? You got to understand something real quick. Before the universe, right, there is no time and space. Therefore, right, there's just a stick as multiple tablas for them. Like, You'll see multiple timelines for them in the universe. Here's what I mean. So, fraud consciousness, right, developed before manifesting physically, right? So, when so frogs are just chilling, doing their own frog thing, right, developing, right? Now, when you see a frog being manifest inside the universe, right, that physical frog being can have multiple timelines. Because the frog being said, okay, when we become physical, should we do this? Should we be over here? Should we be over there? That's where their timelines come into play. So, yes, all multiple timelines link inside the multiverse, you know, mm -hmm. because the universe is where every single first links up at. Whether it be, uh, whether it be, because you can see a verse as a realm and then... Uh, arc verse a uh, arc verse deals with multiple planes because the like for example the universe is is uh planes one two and three multiverse is three four and five three four and five deal with the astral mental and causal or the higher mental right how do you experience the multiverse through your own thoughts what if i do this what if i do that you know what i'm saying like you experience multiverse through your process through possibility and literally you could like you live inside every single verse, literally right now. And people don't realize this, but like you could like make benefits of that because instead of like always just thinking that there's one set timeline, just start thinking about bro, there is mad possibility out here. So whenever you do something, right? You can think about damn, what if I didn't do that? Or if I did something else? And you just start mm -hmm. living out all these different timelines. And even though you're not like living it physically. You're still seeing the possibility of it and taking all the lessons from that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So you could live, in the, could live in the multiverse right now. And then also, I find it weird because it's like different. It's like you could see them as different realities are next to each other, right? So let's say you have reality where you wear blue, where you wear green, right? 
both woods affect each other. So it's like if you do something inside the blue wood, it kind of affects the green wood a bit. Like like the reason mm -hmm. why you kind of chose blue inside this wood is because you remember inside this reality how you wore green one time, but it was kind of bad. You know what I'm saying? But inside this reality, that green shit never happened. So therefore you pick green. It's like there's different ways that these influence each other. So it's like if you look at multiple possibilities, you could like, here's what I love doing, right? If I don't want to talk to somebody inside the physical or like inside this reality, I'll do it inside the multiverse. It is weird because I'll see them in person. It's like we kind of have that mutual understanding of what the fuck already happened. Especially the more like intuitive thing. It's actually two ways. Either if they're super intuitive or not intuitive at all, it works. Here's why I say that. A person who is like, like, that has some consciousness, they're like a loose screw because it's like at some points they could shut down on your intuition shit. You know what I'm saying? But at other points, they're like too unconscious to even control what they do and stuff like that. So it's mm -hmm. like if someone's super unconscious, it's like you can influence them pretty easily. That don't mm -hmm. mean go out here and start messing with people. A lot, that's just something that I realized while talking to unconscious people inside different uh like different realities and different timelines that it influenced this one way more because they're not conscious enough to even overcome the influence. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So thinking about the planes, I'm looking at what you were saying about the different, like we're talking about the causal, the mental, the astral. Now, I want you guys to know that Genie talks heavily about this on his channel and on his Patreon. So if you want in depth about that, you go to that for sure. But I will put up the diagram a little bit here so you guys can see. I used to call these, and this is what the GFL taught me, was that it, they called it the chakras of the universe. And so when he was talking about the different planes, he's referring to the different, like, and he was saying the different layers in which we all experience at the same time. But you also gain more awareness of one once you start evolving in this physical body. So when he was talking about the different beings and how it's like they're there, but they're not, it's because they're there, just not in that, if you want to say, chakra of the universe or that layer of reality. And each layer, you have different things you could do. So, for example, we were talking about the frog beings or like reality shifting, like he was saying. Okay, he's going to reality shift and do that in the astral so he can visit different realities and different versions of time. Now, this is actually what I was just talking about with my client yesterday. Because her guides were heavily speaking about how she could change the timeline if she wants to. So, for example, there's someone she wants to talk to over here. But in the timeline she's in now, she doesn't talk to that person until weeks later, until they initiate it. But she was like, but I kind of want to I kind of want things to move and all that stuff. And I said, listen, you could change the timeline however you want. If you want, you could go there tomorrow and say what's up and then go talk and however it happens it happens but you're changing the timeline right there so if you're on this timeline you can see where things go you're like okay i know especially when you're in awareness you're like i know in a little while he's gonna make a move but i want it to happen sooner so i'm gonna change the timeline. i'm gonna align with this timeline where i approach him and we have conversation and whatnot so you could align with the completely different timeline or like we used to do, we would ask to project and visit these timelines where like, for example, for her, she could visit a timeline where they're actually together and she could see what that is like. And I found that interesting because she has this access to time, but she wasn't realizing how she could use it. And in her mind, she's just like, oh, well, I could I could do this and I could do that. And then things will be a little different. But she's not aware of how she's literally changing the timeline for herself. And I was also thinking about the astral projection you were talking about. It's like when you travel and then you have these conversations, but it's like then when you see them in person, it's some of them. Sometimes they remember. I remember we do this all the time. Like we have a conversation in the astral and then we're talking in the, like in the physical. We're like, did we talk about this before? And then one of us is like, oh, yeah, like we did talk about this in the astral. And then we're like, oh, OK, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I find we do that a lot, and that brings us into the hive mind, which we will talk about soon. But know that these layers, it's really crazy how these layers of reality are like chakras of the universe. And then these things make up, this universe makes up, then the superverse, which makes the omniverse, which makes everything. And there was some science, because I was asking, I remember we were talking about it, and we're, I was asking, I was like, why is it a cube? Like, I don't understand why it's a cube. And they were trying to tell me, they were like a cube. You can't see the same side of it. They're like, it's metaphorical and literal. You can never see whenever you look at one side of the cube, you can never, you always see a different angle of the same thing. 
And I was like, whoa, okay, that's that's getting big, right? But then I was like, all right, Jeannie's going to be able to help me understand fully mathematically, especially why it is a cube. And I found that interesting because I tried to, when I was actually projecting, I tried to go further. I was like, you know me, y'all. I was like, all right, <laughs> let's see what's beyond that joint, right? And it was like a wall. That my guys were looking at me, they went like this. They are like, all right, yo, he went far as hell and he's trying to go more. And I was like, all right, y'all, you right, you right. So then I went back. But the fact it was so large and it was a cube. <laughs> and then they had a technological version of it that was smaller. I was like, yo, this is this is getting like real quantum and scientific, reminding me of Ant-Man a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, I want to know what's up. What do you think about that? Yeah, so as to why it's a cube, in very simple terms, cubes have to structure energy and stuff like that. So the cube officially, you could say, got put into place once they put every single arc verse and linked it inside the universe so it's like back to this picture it's like everything's kind of like all spread out all random here then it gets then it gets cubed up inside the universe type shit so the cube has to like structure the expansion of energy and stuff like that and um oh, i just braid fart oh with the with the technology aspect so yeah they were calling it a natural technology in the sense mm. of like it's made out of natural elements, but those natural elements got artificially structured to have a certain kind of purpose. Mm -hmm. So with the universal cube, I would like, it's like, they'll have like, so the, so you have the great universal cube, right? The actual like structure of the universe, right? And then when they make this artificial cube or this natural technology cube, it's like they, they use crystals to form this cube and the crystal energy hooks up to a certain energy that stretches the reality so mm -hmm. with the cube right there's different it, it structures several different energies because like we have what they call the seven rays of light right or the seven different ways that energy can express itself those energies get structured so like the ruby right is like the harmonious red way red ray so like a ruby cube is structuring the red energy right and you could use that cube to tap into that red energy structure the red shit is like a it's like if you tap into like the ruby aspect you kind of get like this certain vitality and life energy from the universe so with that being said what way they would make it is like i would literally see like it's it's like they would have like andromedas right who actually like it's like the andromedas kind of like meditating right it was like Yo, we could sense this structure, yo, this this, this cube shit, yo. And it was like, <laughs> and it was like, you know, Octorius and the Dramas, they like these. So they was like, yo, bro, Octorius, bro, we thought about this motherfucking cube shit. And it was like, oh, yes, we see. Well, we could. Okay, I kind of got the measurements. Let's fucking make one. Don't in the movies like, they call it the Tesseract? Yeah, yeah, it's a Tesseract, yeah. So... The alternatives is like, oh yeah, I could I could sense it too. 24 degrees by 85, all this other shit. Let's actually motherfucking make one. They was like, okay, but because the, in their eyes, they're like, shit, sense the cues all around us. How about we actually make a structure to actually harness this energy? Now, Alcatoris are also very cool with celestial dragons. Now, why is it so important? Celestial dragons called that because celestial dragons literally make celestial bodies. Like they literally like contain all the rays of light to literally make like a galaxy or a star or some shit like that. Right. Like you'll have, uh, you'll have godheads, right. Or you'll have like celestial gods, right. Who want to make a certain galaxy. So they're like, okay, I'm gonna make this galaxy. They didn't send their dragon stuff to breathe energy inside that galaxy to actually eventually structure it into a galaxy. So they did the same shit with the cube. Like, do, like the notorio go like, okay, they'll make like this invisible grid structure of the cube, and then say, dragon, breathe into this shit. Then the dragon breathe into that shit, and then boom, they got some motherfucking celestial cube shit. And then yeah, so that's kind of how they made it. I, they probably, I'm gonna assume that they use different dragons for different cubes, like a ruby dragon for like a ruby cube or something like this. So I'm gonna assume. But uh, yeah, because the first one I just saw was like when they used the celestial to make like this fucking like it's like this blue whitish one, you know? It is really fucking cool. But yeah. So how would you say? Because I remember we were talking, and I like the way you put it into science. Because when you rap, we talk about we talk about the ether, we talk about the astral realm, all these different layers of reality or chakras of the universe. But the way you put it was interesting. You called it the quantum realm. You call it the, all the quantum stuff. So it's like the science has a word for what we do. And they call it the quantum stuff. And it's making us think about like we have 
Like, for example, I set up a portal and I put it so when I actually project, I could shrink and then shrink down into these little portals in my room. And I was testing that out. And then I was telling Genie about this. And he's like, yo, this is sounding like some Ant-Man shit. And I was like, yo, true. And then that led to talking about the quantum realm and how it ties into everything we're doing. And his view on the quantum realm and how we use his knowledge about it always fascinates me. Yeah, bro. So the quantum realm, right? That's what, yo, when people hear quantum realm, it, it's, it spurs off so many different thoughts, but I would, I would simplify it. So this all started because really I had like got showed this rule that I call ocular sight, right? And like, I knew that you could use the rule to like zoom into different aspects of reality and stuff like that. So it was like literal and metaphorical. So like I could like put my shit on my computer and then zoom in to see the astral aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? But then also like some metaphorical shit. It's like with a person, you could like do it with a person and like look into their soul kind of. It's really interesting. But with that being said, Cash mentioned, mentioned this rude. I'm like, yo, is it this one? Actually, no, no, I thought it was two other ones. He said, I think it's actually that one. I'm like, damn, that is the most newest one. And he, he told me he told me how it was linked to like this like cult like civilization and stuff like that, right? And like, so I found out more about it. I made a I made a story about it's like an hour long. It's gonna drop on YouTube on Tuesday, but to keep it long story short, there's this galaxy, the Leo constellation, where they have what I just call ooze, right? I call it ooze because it Ant Man, if you bro, if you guys have ever saw Ant Man, there's a scene in Ant Man where Ant Man is taken to the quantum realm, right? And then he's he's taken by these beings, right? And there's just chances some shit that he can't understand, right? They make him drink this liquid and it makes him be able to understand. And all he hears is drink the ooze, drink the ooze. Before it's just ah, yeah, yeah. they don't know what it's saying. It just <laughs> says drink the ooze, drink the ooze. And I'm like, bro, when I saw that shit, I'm like, this is also motherfucking real life shit because. With this ooze shit in the Leo constellation or in the galaxy that's in the Leo constellation, when you would drink this ooze, right? And it made you able to perceive the quantum realm, right? So it's dead ass like the same way that like he would drink the ooze and he can actually hear the quantum beings now. You drink the ooze and you start hearing motherfuckers, you start seeing shit. And there's different levels, like like a if you just take a little bit, it's just subatomic, right? Then if you take a bit more, it becomes what they call quantum. So what actually is quantum, right? When people hear the word quantum, they always think like small, right? And you could like kind of see quantum as small, but like the scientific definition, also physics shit, means that it's just a certain amount of energy. So quantum never meant small or big. It's just a certain like it could actually be some big shit. Like if I have mm -hmm. a billion units of energy and stuff like that, and I take nine hundred thousand, that's it's a quantum of energy, which is, that's still some big shit, you know what I'm saying? But with all that being said, right, if you, like, look up the definition in regards to, like, how Marvel used it, it's just anything beyond the subatomic realm. So with that being said, right, beyond subatomic, it starts to get into, like, waves and light fields and stuff like that, which, once again, don't always look, uh, it doesn't always look small. Like, like, there's only beings right now, right, who exist as light fields, who, they're not that dense, therefore you can't see them. But if you did see them, they'll be the same size as you. So, mm -hmm. The they can shrink why... into a little something or they can become huge ass giants. Yeah. And, and the reason why I see that smaller is because you got to understand that with like, let's say you have 10 astral atoms, right? So, so you have 10 astral particles, right? And every particle is one foot big. So, so you have 10 astral particles that link up to 10 feet, right? You could also have physical particles, right? But understand that it takes like 20 astral particles to make one physical particle. So with that being said, right, the size is very relative because when things shrink, it's not like shrinking like this. It's more like this, like like it's getting denser and deeper into it. So with that being said, it's like you could see it as being small. But if you were on that side of reality, this would become the small stuff because mm -hmm. it's like that because like normally you're like inside. You're like you're, you're inside looking at stuff like this. When you get quote unquote smaller, you're actually just going like this and looking down at shit. So there's a whole there's a whole bunch of stuff right in front of you right now, which would seem small until you zoomed into the light field. When you zoomed into the light field, it becomes super duper big. So with all that being said, the quantum is just anything beyond subatomic. And the first thing beyond subatomic is the etheric. And the etheric is what the etheric is where light moves through in order to become physical. So with all that being said, if you look up ethereal monsters, right, on Google, you'll literally see 
quadra beings. Like when you go to like if you if you set your shit to go to the quadra route type shit, you're likely to see these people. Is there are etheric beings? So with all that being said, yeah, technically, the astral is also a quadra. Really, it should be played because quadra route would it would insert would imply a quadra field of activity, right? So that could be like a quadra galaxy. You know what I'm saying? Then the quadra played is just a level where the galaxies actually exist at. So with all that being said. Anything beyond subatomic is technically quantum, meaning that the etheric is quantum, the astral is quantum, the mental is quantum. And it's like the the more you go inside those, the the more like abstract you become. Like right here, you have a whole physical body, right? Inside the etheric, you would have a body, but it's like it's like a plasma like thing. So it's like it's like I could like touch you and move through you, but you're kind of like gooey and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Awesome astral shit. If I touch and move through you, you're not gooey at all. You're just like pure light type shit. Now, inside the astral, you still have like a form. You're like, hey, I, I I could look like a ghost. You know what I'm saying? Once you get to the mental, like if you actually lived inside the mental, I don't mean if I don't mean being aware of the mental. You're aware of thoughts. I mean actually living as a thought. You would just be like a compilation of shapes. You would just be like fucking squares and shit that could make up <laughs> a re that could make up a reality. So it's funny because <laughs> these who get sent to that place, right? Like they just become these thought beings. It's like they bounce between different potential realities. It's like they're they're just like certain shapes that help to make up this reality, and then they make up this one, and then this one. They don't even stabilize inside one. Like a person could learn to stabilize, but if you like, but if like if you got sent there right now, you you're you're done, bro. Because there's like you're like you've never you have never been. People can't even control like people can't even control their mind and stuff like that. So if you can't control mm -hmm. your thoughts and stuff like that, bro, if you got sent inside there, it's all dog. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, y'all. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back. We got some more we're going to talk about. Stay tuned with it.